The shortest common superstring problem was our first attempt to formulate a computational problem that, when solved, would solve the genome assembly problem. But we have a lingering issue with the shortest common superstring formulation, which is that if the genome is repetitive, it will tend to overcollapse the repeats. It will assemble fewer copies of the repeats than are actually there. So in this lecture, we're going to start to consider an alternative algorithm. Uh, so whereas before we used something called an overlap graph, this time we'll use a slightly different kind of graph called a De Bruyne graph. Like the overlap graph, the De Bruyne graph is also a directed graph. So that is, it has edges and those edges have a direction. So let me start with an example that's not really a De Bruyne graph yet, but it gives you some idea of what we're going to be doing here. So say that we have the following phrase, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, and we want to turn it into a particular kind of graph. So first, we'll make one node for every distinct word that's present in our phrase. And this is easy because there are only two uh, distinct words in our phrase, the word tomorrow and the word and. And then for every pair of adjacent words in our phrase, we'll add the corresponding directed edge to our graph. So for the first two words, tomorrow and, we'll add an edge that goes from tomorrow to and, like this. And then for the next two words, and tomorrow, we'll add an edge that goes from and to tomorrow, and so on. So we'll end up with a graph that looks like this. So note that this graph uh, can have more than one edge pointing from one node to another. So for example, from tomorrow to and, there are two edges. Um, so this is sometimes called a multigraph. So our De Bruyne graph will be a multigraph. Okay, so let's switch to DNA and let's build our first De Bruyne graph. So first we have to assume something about the sequencing reads that we're getting. We have to assume that the sequencing reads that we get consist of each of the substrings of the genome of length k. In other words, consists of each of the k-mers from the genome. And that each k-mer is sequenced once. So for every offset in the genome, we're going to extract that, that k-mer. And, and then our sequencing output is just going to be basically a list of all the k-mers in the genome. So if this is the genome that we're sequencing, we're assuming that our reads look like this. Here are all the three mers from the genome. And this is not a very realistic assumption, right? But we'll revisit this later on. So we'll stick with this assumption for now, but then later we'll talk about why it's not really a great assumption to make. So now to build the De Bruyne graph. So we're going to examine each of these k-mers, each of these sequencing reads in turn. And then for each k-mer, we're going to make some corresponding additions to our De Bruyne graph. For each k-mer, we're going to extract its left and right k minus 1 mers. So by k minus 1 mer, I just mean a substring of length k minus 1. So in this example, k equals 3. So a k-mer is a 3-mer. And then a k minus 1 mer, we'll call a 2-mer. So here's a 3-mer, and here are its left and right 2-mers. So to update the De Bruyne graph, first we'll add a node for the left tumor, which is AA. And then we'll do the same for the right tumor, except for that the right tumor is also AA. So we don't need to add a new node because AA is already there. Then we add a directed edge that points from the left to the right tumor. But in this case, both the left and the right tumors are AA, so we're going to make an edge that points from AA back to AA. So that's the first camer. Now let's add the second camer. So again, we're going to look at, it, look at its uh, left and right tumors, which in this case are AA and AB. We'll add a node for the left tumor if needed, but in this case it's not needed because AA is already there. And then we'll add a node for the, left, for the right uh, tumor, which is AB. And then we'll add a directed edge from the left to the right tumor, so from AA to AB. Let's do the same for the third camer. A, B, 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 so we're going to have to new, add a new node for B, B, and then we're going to have to add an edge from A, B to B, B. Let's do the same for this next one. This one's B, 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 so we're going to add an edge that goes from B, B back to B, B. Same thing again for this camer, and then for the final camer, we have B, B and B, A, so we're going to have to add a node for B, A, and then we'll add a directed edge from B, B to B, A. So there we go. So a few points about this graph that we just built. So um, first of all, each camer in the genome corresponds to one edge in this graph. 
that's how we built it, right? For each k-mer, we added its left and right k-minus 1 mers if they weren't already there. And then we drew one additional directed edge. So for each k-mer in the original genome, there's a corresponding edge in our De Bruyne graph. And also, I'll note that there's a node for every distinct k minus 1 mer. So if the k minus 1 mer, when we were adding the uh, nodes and edges, if a k minus 1 mer already had a node in the graph, we did nothing. But if it didn't have a node in the graph, then we added it. So at the end of the day, the nodes are going to correspond to all the distinct k minus 1 mers from the genome. So here's a question. So let's say I hadn't shown you the genome sequence. And all I showed you was this De Bruyne graph, which was built over the genome's three mers. Could you then go and reconstruct the sequence of the original genome from this graph? So th just think about that for a few moments. So it turns out the answer is yes. So a reconstruction of the original genome corresponds to a walk through the graph. In other words, we can start at some node in this graph and then move through the graph from node to node, following the edges as we go, respecting the direction of each edge. So we're always going to walk in the direction of an edge. And we can reconstruct the genome as we go. So, I'll, so the walk here that allows us to reconstruct the genome is the walk that crosses each edge exactly once. Another way of thinking of that is that it uses each camera exactly once. So in the case of this graph here, the walk goes like this. And it'll look familiar, because this is also the order in which we added the edges. So we'll start here in this AA node. And we're going to follow this first edge here, which takes us from AA back to AA. And at this point, we've reconstructed the first three characters of the genome, the first three-mer of the genome. Now let's follow the second edge. That allows us to tack on a B to, to the reconstruction of the genome. Now let's follow this edge. We're going to tack on another B. And then we'll follow these two edges, both of the uh, edges that go from BB back to BB. And that causes two more Bs to be appended on. And then we'll follow this last edge and append one last A. So we successfully reconstructed the original genome sequence here. So here's a bit of vocabulary. So I'll walk through a directed graph that visits each edge, that crosses each of the edges in the graph exactly once. It has a special name. It's called an Eulerian walk. So not every graph that you can possibly write uh, has an Eulerian walk. Uh, but a graph uh, that does is called an Eulerian graph. And as it turns out, using the assumptions that we made about the sequencer, you know, saying that we get each camer of the genome exactly once, if we go ahead and, and construct the graph according to this procedure, the graph will always be Eulerian. It will also we will always have an Eulerian walk, which is our way of reconstructing the genome sequence. So this actually gives us a new algorithm for solving the assembly problem. Uh, we take our reads, we build the corresponding De Bruyne graph, uh, which is Eulerian as long as we had one read uh, for every camer. And an Eulerian walk through the graph it gives us a reconstruction of our original genome. So we'll see this idea in action in the following lecture.